Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Eli Siegel, and I'm honored to host today's anniversary of the President's uh, National Volunteer Action Awards, just as I'm honored to when the President asked me to serve as his Director of the Office of National Service. Next week, our President will introduce his national service legislation. It will help to revolutionize America in the best of American traditions. Recognizing, as the President said at Rutgers just seven weeks ago, that service is the way to change America. In doing so, we are and will always be mindful that service is far more than the best legislation, far more than the most focused and committed government. Service is a movement of millions of Americans who recognize that communities are built not by bricks and mortar, but by the courage and the concerted action of our citizens. Today, in this East Room, we honor that spirit. After his remarks, the President will present the award medals to this year's recipients of the President's Volunteer Action Awards. But first, I'd like to acknowledge the co-sponsors of the awards for making this day possible, our friends from the Points of Light Foundation and our friends from Action, the Federal Domestic Volunteer Agency. Can we have a nice hand for the Points of Light Foundation and Action? I'd also like to thank the financial sponsors of the awards for their vital assistance and long-term support. Finally, we have two very special groups with us today, the USA Weekends Make the Difference Award winners and the Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Year. Let's have a warm round of applause for these exceptional Americans as well. My friends, you'll understand now that I've waited a long time to do this. Uh, 32 years ago, another young and idealistic president told us that we could do better. It is my honor to introduce someone who took up that challenge and is now challenging all of, challenging all of us to new seasons of service. My friend and your president, President Bill Clinton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much. I want to thank, uh, first of all, the people who have made possible this 12th annual National Volunteer Action Award event. Uh, begun in the early 1980s under President Reagan, the people from the Points of Light Foundation and the folks from Action. I want to say, too, to all of you that this is a matter of great personal pride to me to be president and to be a part of this today because I have believed for a long time in grassroots community efforts and community service. Uh, last year, on the occasion of my birthday, which I share with the Vice President's wife, Tipper Gore, uh, our two families went to Georgia and built a house uh, with Habitat for Humanity, along with President and Mrs. Carter, as a way of symbolizing our commitment to national service. And my daughter selected a school here in Washington in part because one of the requirements of being enrolled in the school was to do community service. And just a couple of days ago, uh, she and her group went out and did one of their service projects working to build uh, some park facilities for young people who will come behind and, and use those facilities. And I can't help but say I'm especially proud today because one of the honorees uh, today is the Arkansas Land and Farm Development Corporation from my home state. I should say I had nothing to do with selecting <laughs> any of these awards, but they will tell you that for well over a decade, uh, I have worked with them in many ways, watching them uh, work against often enormous odds to empower poor people in rural areas to seize control of their own destiny. So I am especially proud of them as well as of all the other honorees. I think all of you recognize the fundamental truth that as Americans and as human beings, we can never be completely fulfilled unless we help each other. Just a few moments ago, 
I was over at the dedication of the Holocaust Museum. And we recognized, of course, uh, the great losses of the Jewish people, of the gypsies and others who were systematically exterminated by the Nazis. But we also recognized the services of perhaps the most important volunteers in the 20th century, those who put their lives at risk to try to save large numbers of the Jews. And on that cold, wind-whipped occasion, I think it's fair to say that by far the most popular speaker at the event was a woman who put her life at risk to shield Jews from almost certain death and in the process found a person who became her husband. The scriptures say that in giving we will receive. Uh, perhaps not all of us will find a mate for life in our gifts, but all of us certainly will receive. I think it has been recognized for a long time that service sustains and defines our democracy and helps us to understand that we are not brought together by race or religion or region, but that we cannot be kept apart by those things if we have common values, common interests, and undertake common endeavors. After all, volunteers won the American Revolution. And ever since, volunteers have been winning our wars and winning the battles of peacetime. Volunteers helped to get women the right to vote and helped to affect the Civil Rights Revolution and help us even today to overcome the barriers that divide us. All generations have been called upon to serve and today as people are living longer than ever before, every generation now living is called upon to serve to deepen our lives and to strengthen the bonds of our communities. Today is so special to me because we are recognizing those of you who have risen to the challenge in particularly innovative and effective ways. I hope that as we honor you today, you will all join me in renewing our call for all Americans to embrace the spirit of service. We all have roles to play. Even those who are not in organizations represented here may be able to help to patrol this police and support the work of law enforcement officers in areas plagued by high crime where children are unsafe. Or may help to volunteer in a community health center where health care is available in theory but not in practice unless people can find their way to the clinic. Or tutoring children after school or being mentors to children who themselves would like to do better but don't have the role models they need. We bring out the best and in our country when we serve. I know that you know that I've tried to make sure our government will do its part. And as Mr. Siegel said, next week I intend to introduce the national service legislation that I hope will change our country for the better and forever. To provide a revolution in the best sense of the word, bringing us back to our best values, offering opportunity, requiring responsibility, and creating a stronger sense of the American community. Those are the things which drove me into this race for president well over a year ago, and the things which I hope so deeply will be embodied in the national service movement. We want to make opportunity available by making it easier to get a loan, to go to college, and easier to pay it off through service. Demanding responsibility by making sure that everybody who gets something from their government finally give something back. We hope in service, but at least in dollars. And rebuilding communities all over this country through our civilian GI Bill, with thousands of people paying their way to college either before or after they go by doing what their communities need. We'll bring ourselves a little closer to that sacred day when all of our children can live up to their full potential by working together to make sure that we do that as well as the children we're trying to help. If these efforts are to succeed, the spirit of service must be renewed in the hearts of every American, not just in those who will be part of the national service movement. I hope that this movement will go well beyond party or any other political division in this country. I hope that everybody will embrace the cause and the spirit because I believe we can change the country. If we can do it here in the government, we can then challenge our corporations, our foundations, our schools, our nonprofits to follow the leads of those whom we honor here today. 
And if we're in it for the long haul, because we know we all have a role to play, I really believe it means an America finally and fully living up to its potential. That is, being more like those of you whom we honor today. Thank you very much. Now it is our pleasure to honor this year's Volunteer Action Award recipients. I'll ask you to hold your applause, if you will, until the end. Our first award winner, we're pleased to honor the Angel Network Charities of Honolulu, Hawaii, which provides temporary housing and job recruitment for the homeless. Accepting is Ivy Olson, Program Director. <laughs> next, this will be a particular honor for the president. We are pleased to honor the angel. Uh, we're pleased. Next is the Arkansas Land and Farm Development Corporation of Brinkley, Arkansas, which enlists successful African American farmers as mentors to less fortunate farmers in danger of losing their property. Accepting is Calvin King, founder and executive director. Next is the uh, Clubhouse Gang of Tip City, Ohio, involving young people as mentors to children from inner city neighborhoods, accepting as Michael Nigren, director. <laughs> Our next honorees are Gerald and Lorene Earls, who formed Slum Busters to get their inner city neighborhood involved in clearing up city lots and converting them to gardens. Mr. and Mrs. Earls. Next, I'd like to introduce Teresa DeFreitas, who led in the expansion of Deborah Home, a care and residential facility in Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. Ms. DeFreitas. And now we'd like to honor Fresh Start Surgical Gifts in Encinas, California, where area doctors and nurses provide reconstructive surgery for children and suffering from physical deformities. Accepting is Dr. Dennis Nigro, founder. Next, we have Hallmark Cards of Kansas City, Missouri, where employees and their families assist with children who are residents of an area psychiatric center, accepting is Barbara Null, corporate volunteer. And now we honor Homeward Bound of Phoenix, Arizona, which utilizes HUD housing Volunteer, volunteer sponsors and professional caseworkers to help homeless and low-income families secure affordable housing, accepting as Dr. Pamela Martin, Executive Director. Next, someone I had a chance to spend some time with last night, a really wonderful man, Lonnie Jackson of Columbus, Georgia who started combined communities to assist at-risk students with their studies and to encourage them to vote. Mr. Jackson.
And now we honor the Morehouse Mentoring Program of Atlanta, Georgia, involving over 300 students from Morehouse College, mentoring and tutoring inner city children, accepting as Russell Gray, president and student volunteer. And now we have the Neighborhood Health Clinics of Portland, Oregon, which enlists hundreds of medical professionals providing volunteer services to more than 10,000 people each year, accepting as Margaret Jaza, Executive Director. And next, we honor the Norwalk Mentor Program from Norwalk, Connecticut, involving hundreds of adults mentoring at-risk children from elementary school through high school, accepting is David Wright. <laughs> and next is Operation Fresh Start from Madison, Wisconsin, which provides job skills to at-risk individuals by enlisting them in converting abandoned houses into affordable community housing, accepting is Bernice Owen, volunteer. And now from my home area, we honor our positive posse of Brockton, Massachusetts, started by teenagers to encourage young people in public housing to stay off drugs and assume responsibility for changing their communities. Accepting is Nicole Harrison, a special volunteer. Next is the PT Phone Home Project of the Communications Workers of America in Poughkeepsie, New York. Union members install bedside telephone systems at the Castle Point Veterans Hospital, the first veterans facility in the country to provide bedside access to telephones. Is accept accepting today is Frank Dozio, the founder. And the Next, we have Quest for Excellence from Gadsden, Alabama, where volunteers help young high schools in danger of dropping out by providing academic assistance and sports and talent programs. Accepting is Rudolph Williams, the sports director. And now, we honor Reach Community Development of Portland, Oregon which recently involved 100 volunteers renovating and landscape low-income housing communities. Accepting is Dee Walsh, the executive director. And now I'd like to introduce Beatrice Salazar of Carrollton, Texas, who started Bees Kids, which provides child care for an area low-income housing complex. Ms. San Salazar. And next we have Barbara Wilk of Westport, Connecticut, who starred Eyes of the Future, where eye care professionals administer eye care to Native American children and seniors in New Mexico and Arizona. Ms. Wilk. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, the Yarmouth Health Council of Yarmouth, Maine, which for decades has provided medical services and dental care for area low-income children, accepting as Constance Hildreth Volunteer. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, one final round of applause for all the outstanding volunteers we have with us today. <laughs> 